would love to sit here and paint the scene. It's so gorgeous. And I can hear all the lambs in the distance. <laughs> They're so cute. Uh, but this is a pretty steep embankment next to a busy road. And this, there's all a, a huge patch of nettle, which when you touch it, it stings you. So that's not fun. Um, but check out this amazing tree. The blossoms are in full bloom. It smells so good. Uh, so I took a few reference photos and I'll maybe paint virtually later. Uh, so I'm gonna go back to the car and see if I can find a more uh, a spot that I can actually sit and paint the countryside. Hello, virtual Sarah here, back in the studio. I did end up driving around a lot that day, but couldn't find any spot that had a great view and a location I could sit. So I took tons of video and reference photo and brought it back to the studio. I think like halfway through my location scouting trip, I just kind of gave up on the thought of painting outside and tried to really soak in the visuals um, and just the feeling of being out there. All of this was actually back in June, so a ton of the blossoms were in full bloom, and every time I drove through the countryside, I just, oh, it was so gorgeous, and I'm like, man, I really need to paint this. And for as long as I've lived in Scotland and had this wonderful scenery around me, I realized I really rarely just go out and paint the countryside, even though it's such a beautiful, inspiring visual. <laughs> So as a lot of you know, I am currently experimenting with using gouache very, very thick. So as opposed to my old technique, which was to use lots of thin layers at first and then slowly build up the thickness as I got towards the end of the painting, uh, which I still do. I, I still do that and I love it, but I just really want to push myself in exploring this medium. So one thing that I've been finding that really helps with this is to make sure you mix enough paint to fill in a certain area. <laughs> One of the difficult parts of gouache is the drying shift and because it dries matte, if you don't mix enough color and then you have to mix more, it is so hard to get the exact color match and the smooth matte surface that's view that you see when you dr it dries reveals any discrepancy. It's like super obvious. So that has been a really big lesson learned for me and something that I'm just terrible at. It's like I I fear I have this fear of wasting paint. So I tend to mix less than I need, which is fine for watercolor and oil painting and other things because in the end you don't really notice if you have to go back and like mix color again and then add it in but man gouache is very unforgiving in that way i find that it helps to mix the colors or mix these bigger piles of paint with my palette knife because it doesn't clog up the bristles of the brush while i'm mixing one thing i find that if i use my brush to mix somehow the paint dries out faster <laughs> so it's like i'm constantly losing the moisture in the paint as i'm mixing which is no good. You want it to to remain soft and, and flowy before you put it on the paper. So I've been using this palette knife to pre-mix any areas of larger color that I need. And then for the smaller stuff, it's fine to just mix it with the brush. For today's video, I really just wanted to focus on talking about the importance of consistency of the paint because it's the more I use gouache, the more I realize that is pretty much the game changer. So learning how much water to use versus how dry you want your brush to be is everything. <laughs> so depending on if you want to fill in larger areas or if you are going for like a dry brush thing in the last layer where you want some of the texture to come through, those two have a completely different approach. When doing the initial layers, which are mostly just bigger areas of flat color and lots of thick paint, I find that if I get my brush wet, wipe it off on the cloth, dip it in the fresh paint, put it on the paper, I have about th anywhere from like three to 10 seconds before my brush dries out. 
So I then have to clean the brush off in water again, touch it on the paper, t uh, paper towel or whatever, and put it back on the paper. I mean, dip it in the paint and then put it back on the paper. So if I have a big pile of paint, I don't have to do all of that quite so often. Sometimes I can go a little bit further, but the second I feel the brush getting a little bit, um, it's like dragging because it's getting drier. I have to go through that process again. And that is a very different approach to painting um, compared to like watercolor or even oil or acrylic. So if you're new to gouache and you aren't aware of that, it's it's something that just takes so much. It takes more effort. It takes constantly. Um, at first for me, it was like struggling to get that paint to flow and then realizing, oh, right, I need to clean off my brush and do that all over again. So yeah, if you're out there struggling, I totally get you. <laughs> it t has taken me quite a few paintings to get used to that. So look how much I've done on this painting so far, and you could probably rewind and count how many times I've cleaned my brush off already. So it's quite often. Um, but if you do that and it just it becomes quicker and quicker and just more natural, you realize how beneficial it is and how much it helps. So not only is it going to keep your brush clean and the paint won't be like cross contaminating between colors, it'll also keep or allow you to use it very thick and, and creamy. I want to talk a little about color choices and values as well. And I could do a whole video on this topic, but I've been seeing more and more comments pop up about this. So I figured I would just address it in this painting. So this is my original reference photo and I wasn't super excited about the colors. So I shifted it slightly in Photoshop. I made it a little more pastel and boosted some of the blues. And even with that change, I still knew that I was going to adjust the colors quite a bit. F for me, the most important thing is a in a painting is not filling it with pointless detail. It's not replicating exactly what I see in a scene or in a reference photo. It's how do I capture the initial spirit or the feeling I had when I was there. And for me, being outside in this location, it was like this wave of joy and the sun was just pouring down and the lambs were in the distance the breeze was blowing gently so I wanted to capture almost this like fairy tale countryside feeling uh, when I go down back to the studio to paint it I'm carrying that with me and I'm thinking or I let Em the emotional reaction happen so that memory that comes up in my head is much brighter and softer and just almost fantasy like <laughs> so I want to honor that in my painting going into this when I knew I wanted to capture that kind of fantasy like feeling I thought okay one way I can do that is to keep it more pastel because it's not super true to nature um, and also for me that was going to be a challenge because I don't use pastel very often I mean maybe here and there in my paintings but I rarely do a whole painting that has more pastel colors um, but I knew that if I added white to every single mixture that I do in this painting even in the shadow mixtures I could achieve a slightly more pastel version and you know it was an experiment going into it, but it ended up working out. <laughs> and then it's a matter of what do I want the actual focus to be in this painting? And when first arriving at the scene, which you probably noticed earlier <laughs> with my excitement, was the beautiful blossoms on this foreground tree. And the way the light was just catching a little bit of the rim light on the blossoms, um, even though most of the tree was in shadow, it just made those those parts that were illuminated stand out so much more and it was captivating. So I wanted to kind of focus the painting towards that as well as a couple of the mid-ground trees and the highlights that were hitting those blossoms as well. So with that in mind, how do I make this an interesting painting and, and keep the focus where I want it? When you look at this reference photo, you might notice that the entire grassy rolling hill area is basically the same color. So it's up to me, the artist, to do the work and to figure out what would make it interesting and, and move the focus or move the viewer's eye to where I want it. 
And there are so many different ways you can do that. You can do it with form, with value, with color. Um, it's really up to you. And that's the fun part about painting. I decided I wanted to locate my brightest brights and my darkest darks exactly where the focus would be so that I knew if the as soon as the viewer looked at it those would stand out in their eye and they would catch their attention. One thing that helps me do this is to come up with zones in my painting so I will put all of my emphasis in a certain zone. In this case it was the sort of lower mid ground to foreground area and the tree that's closest to me. So in this zone is where all of my brightest brights and darkest darks will be. Another thing I do in my head, and I've drawn a very crude example for you, please don't laugh at me, is to come up with color zones. And even though value is much more important than color in painting, I do love to play with color. So I decided to come up with this little game plan. Everything is extremely simplified. This is merely just a almost a dry run in my head to think about where I want certain colors or certain values to be and then translate that back to painting realistic forms in the painting. So I hope that helps you guys kind of get an idea of what I do in my mind before I start painting and you know sometimes I will actually sit down and do draw out my value studies and work out the problems on paper uh, it just kind of depends on how much time I have or what's going on. A lot of what I'm sharing with you today is sort of second nature to me, but I struggle a lot. And I don't know if it comes across that way. Sometimes when I'm talking through these uh, like process videos, I feel like I'm giving you guys this impression of like, I know what I'm doing all the time, but that is so not the case. I am forever experimenting. <laughs> However, there are some things that are second nature, and that's purely just through repetition. Hundreds and thousands of hours, hundreds of paintings. Um, and I have said this so many times, but do master studies. That means you take a painting by a master artist. Uh, the whole point is to choose paintings that are very successful and spend a lot of time looking at them and critiquing them in your mind and understanding what they've done and then sit down and try to replicate it and by doing that you are learning so much about color about light about just how to place those things in various ways to achieve your goal and the more you do that the more you kind of open your mind to new things a lot of times it's stuff I've never thought about before. You know, if you don't have an instructor helping you along the way, this is kind of the closest thing you can get. <laughs> You're like talking to these artists through their paintings. And the more you do that, the more you apply what you learn in those sessions to your own paintings, those things do become second nature. Okay, enough of that. Uh, back to the painting. One of my strategies for drawing the attention down to that zone that I talked about earlier is to introduce a couple unique colors to this area and they have a bit of punch to them. So they are still kind of pastel, but they have more saturation or more warmth as compared to everything around them. So one thing that we have here in Scotland, <laughs> pretty much everywhere, are these beautiful gorse bushes covered in orangish yellow flowers and there were a lot of them in the field so I added a couple right in the transition area between the distant greener hills and the foreground bright grasses and of course this is also where the little trees with blossoms will start to have start to appear so this little hill on the left side, there are going to be a couple of the brighter trees there. And then of course the bigger one in the foreground. I wanted to start off with a slightly pale greenish blue tone because I didn't want it to be too deep or too distracting, knowing that I would come back in and basically cover the entire trunk and branch structure with the blossoms. Starting with the more shadowy tone of the leaves and then building up the warmth and the brightness of the blossoms on top of that. 
And in the end, I kind of went a little bit bold with the greens because I wanted it to feel a little bit different than those distant hills. The blossoms were almost pure white with a hint of yellow here and there, but because I was doing this when the tree was still wet, it started to blend in a little bit. So I knew it wouldn't be too distracting, but it would offer that punch of color and really make it feel like the sunlight was illuminating those blossoms. As I started to paint the foreground elements, I knew I wanted a higher contrast because that would be more of the focal area. So I started off with just doing some deeper, kind of cooler greens there that would contrast that yellow grass in the midground. And I also came back in and drew the tree shape because I really wanted to have a better guide and I had painted over my initial sketch completely. <laughs> To really start emphasizing the contrast, I began to add some deeper greens and cooler greens in the foreground, especially to emphasize that huge patch of nettle that was growing there, as well as some of the other grasses and plants. And while I was working on this area, I was kind of trying to build up the courage that it would take to paint that tree because it was the final element to add and the most important. I knew I was going to be painting over all that hard work I did in the background and I just had to go for it. So I was kind of making that plan in my head knowing or thinking about what colors I was going to use and thinking about what would really benefit the situation. And as I was lost in thought thinking about how to do the tree, I let myself forget about my camera equipment. and. I didn't realize until the end that the, the memory card was full. <laughs> I was so gutted when I realized this because I really wanted to show that whole process. But let me just break, break it down for you really quick. I started off by laying in a deep brown color for the trunk. And that was just a pure solid color. And then I came back in with that deeper green for the leaf. And I filled in the whole area where I wanted all of the, the leaves to be. And I slowly started building up the warmth by adding in hints of yellow here and there. And then I even touched a little bit of warmth on the trunk of the tree itself. It was a pretty slow process, which I guess is why the camera ran out. And I'm still trying to figure out why it didn't beep at me like it usually does. But anyways, um, at this point in the painting, I was pretty far along, nearly done with everything. And I just knew I needed to really capture the feeling of those illuminated blossoms. They were technically sort of backlit at this tree or maybe side and backlit. So part of the blossoms themselves needed to be in shadow. I used a bit of pale blue here, just white mixed with one of my blues and started dotting in the location of the blossoms really just quickly, just working really loosely, trying to get a big cluster of, le of flowers here and there, and then in other spots just like a few that are off on their own. But for the most part, every part of the tree is covered in blossoms. And then I could come back in with the bright white, pure white, and highlight just the tip and the right side of the, the blossom. So just a couple quick brush strokes on almost all of the blossoms, or at least anywhere I thought the sun would be filtering through. And as I was doing that, I realized my tree just didn't quite feel full enough. The real tree that I was painting was extremely full. You could actually barely see any of the branches. So I decided to come back in and fill in the tree a little bit. Once I had filled in more of the foliage, I realized there would probably be more blossoms there. So I came back in with that pale blue and then I could do the final bit of highlight on the blossoms with pure white. Hope you guys enjoyed this longer session. I wanted to make up for the fact that I couldn't upload anything this past weekend, but uh, there's so much going on and I'm really trying to keep on track with my to-do list. If I missed talking about anything in particular that you guys would like to hear about, please do let me know in the comments. And of course, if you want to help out my channel, you can smash that like button. <laughs> Sounds so weird. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys for hanging out with me and listening to me uh, ramble on about this painting. And I will see you all again soon.